We've, Johnny, we made it to the guitar show. We're here. Unfortunately, no one else is here. Or wait. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I'm excited. I'm pretty excited. How long? Are we excited. <laughs> I'm very excited. Now, how long were we in the car? I don't know. Four hours, three, three hours, three and a half hours. Three I think. and a half hours. Four hours if you count our stop at Arby's. Blew by. So we're at the Carolina Guitar Show, and we're gonna find our top five favoritest things. Are you saying that we're on location? We are on location. We're we not on location? in location cave. There's noise. There's excitement <laughs> everywhere. We're not in the cave. No. But um, we're gonna find five fun guitars. We've already seen a bunch of people we know and love. Great guitar shops around the country are here. It's the rebirth of guitar shows after a almost two year hiatus. Yes. What do you want to find? Everything. I want to find amps. Amps? I want oh. the things I plug into. How about some cool SGs? I like some cool SGs too. Or a Les Paul. I don't know. Or a Les Paul. Uh, or a Strat. Spin an SG mood. Um, I want some amps. Give me some amps. So we're going to go journey. Follow us. Come with us. Okay, so Baxter gets to choose Dumble Overdrive Special. There's a Dumble Overdrive Special right here. Be a nice practice amp. <laughs> it's right behind me. <laughs> Now, one of my friends actually has three of these. What? Which is insane. Um, I, I thought he was kidding, then I saw them, and I, I believe him. But if I could have any amp in here, I'm obviously, I want this one right here. I don't have the scratch for it right now. But if you're looking for it, obviously, you got to hear it play the game music. Um, so you can get it there. If, you can, if they're not selling the show, which they might, there's people sniffing around. It's possible. Yep. I heard some sniffers. I heard some. But um, check them out on the, on the web, the interwebs. You can find them there. But um, this is the amp of... Majesty. I mean, who plays this amp? Everyone. 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 Joe, Joe Bonamassa. Well, back in his like glory tone days, before he shifted to the '57, you know, Browns and everything. There's, there's this guy named John Mayer who's kind of new. He's doing that '80s thing. Heard he's played him before. He's playing a mothing amp now. <laughs> no, but it's it's. If you don't know what Dumble is, I'm I'm sorry. It's Robin one of the greatest. Robin Ford, amps. Santana. Oh, yeah. Everyone. I would love this amp. I'm gonna see if I can negotiate it one of the ones off of it and then maybe cut the three down a bit. That's it. That's one of Baxter's top choices. <laughs> you don't get to hold it. Okay, Baxter's number one choice. 57 gold top. That's going to be my win in the show right now as far as what I got to have. Again, at the same place as the Dumble. So I'm going to be about $300,000 poorer at the end of this trip. But this guitar looks in great condition. The checking is perfect. Mr. Murphy would drool over that himself if he saw this. Gorgeous piece. I'm gonna flip around in a minute so we can check out the headstock. You have an intact headstock. Look at that serial number there. That neckwear is perfect. I'm quite happy with this guitar. So if you are interested in this guitar, again, play it again, music. Beautiful, please. Just check them out on um, check them out on the interwebs. They have this, and they have two dumbbells, I just heard. So if you want two, not just one, you have a stereo set. 57 Les Ball, gold top. Baxter's number one so far. We're here at Jimmy Wallace Guitars from Garland, Texas. We're going to see one of our favorites. It's a refin, but it's a good refin. It is. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. Damn. Okay, right now we're with probably Derek's favorite thing in the show. I'm going to say this is Derek's number one. 59 Esquire. Do I even need to talk about it? Look at it. It's perfect. The patina is great. The edge is great. The model holding it is perfect. <laughs> it's always, um, we love it. Can you flip that thing around for us too? Look, Look at that. that. It's, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. This is what the custom shop at Fender wants to replicate every time they build a guitar. The checking's outrageous. The heel cap looks awesome. One more flip for us, please, please, please. I gotta look at it. Oh, there we go. I'm holding it now. Get it in there, nice and tight. She's very light. Original case. It's had a refin on it. Just the body, but we love it. Where are you guys from? Garland, Texas. Garland, they drove all the way up here from Texas with lots of guitars in their pockets. Beautiful. Oh, it's famous now. So thanks a bunch. Thanks a bunch for letting us do this. Pleasure. Beautiful guitar. That might be the that might be one of the best. 
Now, sadly, this one is sold already. This one's from the same little place in Garland, Texas. 54 gold top. This is what I kill for. I mean, that These are things is I kill sweet. For. Yeah. If Larry was here with us now, he's somewhere around here, he would want to kill us for this one as well. He would probably try. This one is good. I don't know who bought this thing, but she is perfect. No neck repairs on her. Looking great. Natural checking. Amazing. Amazing. The patina is just right on her. Congratulations to that new owner. Yes. Lucky sons of guns. Standing next to one of our other favorite acoustic finds of the show, 1936 Gibson Trojan. Very rare and great condition, what I would say, for this year. Beautiful guitar. The neck, fantastically large. A huge V. Jonathan, do you like this neck? I love that neck. That's, that's my jamming neck. I love it. Now, this would be the guitar I would take home take on the road with me, play it every second of the day. I love it. I need a bigger bank account <laughs> and a bigger paycheck. Can I get a raise? Sure. This raise it for thing. everyone. I know, please. Yeah, this guitar is nuts. I found a few Dream Guitars. They're all Gibsons that I'm falling in love with so all far. All Gibsons. Weird. One Esquire. Oh yeah, that's Esquire. We had an Esquire. Cool. It was Don't a refin. forget that. Eh, you know, that but was cool. Um, yeah, so. Trojan. It's cool. It's got shoulders that slope. It does all sorts of neat things. I love it. I want to take it home. Thank you, wonderful wife of mine, letting me buy this guitar. Okay, I'm here at one of my favorite guitars again. I'm a Gretsch lover. I found one of the True Penguins that I love, love, love. It is white, it's furious, it's beautiful. And this guy right here is amazing. He's gonna explain it all for us. Coming in closer. <laughs> Tell us what this guitar is. Come close to me. Okay, this guitar is the original 56 Gretsch White Penguin. Uh, it was from the Gordon Down collection, and Gordon was the guy when it comes to white penguins. Gordon actually owned four of these total. There's about 12 known to exist, and the things that make it distinctive is the single cutaway, and it was made in the 50s. They also made these with a double cut. Uh, yeah, they're not quite as desirable as the single cut versions like this, but they're so rare. Uh, Nick Gordon, when he found the very first one in the early 80s, uh, a lot of people didn't believe he had actually found one because they were never in the catalog. They only appeared in one price list that listed a white, basically, I don't even think it said white people, I think it had a model designation that nobody knew what it was. And uh, Gordon found the first one in uh, upstate New York in about 83. And uh, that one is affectionately referred to as Dirty White Boy, which is not here, unfortunately but I do have it. This one is known as Mr. Clean. It's a 56, and uh, it's got all of the groovy white penguin appointments. And these guitars are also, there's a large number of forgeries out there. So this is one of the guitars that years ago, people were doing forgeries of, way ahead of most guitars. Ridiculous. But things like the binding, the pick guard, some of the parts, really can't be replicated. Uh, the, the, you may could now because of the technology, but 30 years ago, to try to replicate some of those, fabricate some of those parts, you just couldn't. Well, Eric, how much is this guitar for sale for? This guitar is $150,000. Uh, it's got the original P1 case also. And uh, that's just a wonderful guitar. At one time, the white, the white P1 at one time was considered the absolute epitome of all vintage collectible It guitars. still is in my mind. It is, this is. the problem is, even like the single cuts like this, uh, I don't even know what the last legit sell of one was. The last sell of one that garnered a lot of attention was in the late 90s. So, and I think it was 85000 and that was the J. Scott with the uh, Shinnery Hall. Well, if you are interested in this guitar, Eric at Abalone Music, he can get sorted for it. You just have to have 150,000 large ones. I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> okay, we found another one of my favorites. Rich, right? Yeah. Baxter. Hey, how Nice are to you? meet you. Casino Guitars, loving your, um, your toys here. Tell us about this guitar. I want it. So it's a 52. Almost entirely original. I had to replace this inlay, and the jack plate was made of leather. Somebody had put a leather jack plate, which I know, which I have, but I've never seen before. Why wouldn't you want leather on the jack plate? <laughs> well, it's good, but and then uh, 
Lindy Fraling had to rewind the bridge pickup, and then this is the Mojo X yep. reversible mod that makes it playable, and it sounds great. You know, what a lot of people don't realize is that when they developed the first humbuckers, they were trying to get them to sound like this just without the 60 cycle hum. Right. So, so the tone is very similar to the PAFs, you know? Okay. It's a beautiful piece. Thank you. It's, I, I play it. It's got original frets. Wow. Everything's original. I found it. I got it. My friend sent me a picture of it. It was on Facebook Marketplace in a pawn shop. The pictures were horrific. It looked like it had been sanded down or something. But then when I saw it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this guitar is in much better shape <laughs> than, how, uh, it's than the pictures indicate. How much are you asking for this guitar? 21. 21,000, not 2100, just to clarify. Um, this is a gorgeous one. What about this SG behind me? So this um, this is identical to the guitar I bought in 1974 for $200, which I then sanded and put Grovers in, you know, Demarzio Big Ups and sold when I was in high school. But um, I, at some point after going through all the Fenders and Charvels and Jacksons and everything, I, I uh, thought, what about my old guitar? I should get my first guitar. So. So my brother told me, he, my uh, photographer I work with has one under his bed. And uh, so I got it uh, from New York City from a photographer named Dave Smallheiser. And, um, and it's, it's completely stock. Wow. Uh, oh, actually, I did get the frets replaced recently. And the guy that did the frets said I need to spray the back of the neck because there was just some of this jiggy stuff. But uh, I play the hell on all these things. I, I gig and record and all. That's and a beautiful guitar. Original case and all, and it wasn't two hundred dollars like in nineteen seventy four, unfortunately. No. Seems like back then everything was two or maybe three hundred dollars. <laughs> so if you like any of these, how can they find you? Uh, RichNelson.com is my website, or the RichNelsonBand.com, and um, yeah. But, uh, we're putting some kids through college right now, yeah, so pretty, buy these guitars. Exactly. <laughs> we're not making any deals though, because they're really good guitars and they're pretty much original, which is pretty, yeah, pretty if, shocking. If anything has been uh, had to be changed, like that jack plate, and I just pointed out. But other than that, uh, jack I got plate. The mojo. <laughs> That's it. Thanks a bunch. Yeah, thank you. Thank what you. A cool thing. <laughs> All right, we found JT Guitars, their booth. They're from Greer, South Carolina, which is awesome. This is a pretty sweet 53 gold top. Few things not original. You can check out the back here in a second. You can see a little repair on the neck, but it feels awesome. This would be a great player. I believe they're asking 12.5 for this one, so hit them up. If you want a nice old Les Paul, you can play. This wouldn't be a bad choice. So definitely one of my top picks here at the show, 1953 Gold Top. Check it out. fun playing it. That's a cool little toy there. I don't know, I kind of like it. I like weird little lamps though, you know?